had a solid first quarter whose production exceeded our expectations. Silver cash cost net of byproduct credits was an amazingly low 84 cents per ounce. This low cost production along with our higher output at our Casa Berardi gold mine allowed our cash position to grow $14 million to $213 million. This is the fourth or fifth time our cash position uh, has grown over a quarter. Cash costs after byproduct credits has been the standard way of reporting costs in the mining industry for the last 20 plus years. I in fact was at the industry meeting that was the catalyst for this reporting of a non-GAAP measure. This metric captures all the direct costs of the mine necessary to produce an ounce of metal after byproduct credits. It includes mining, processing, refining, admin, production taxes. Now this year, Hecla began reporting all in sustaining costs because over the last three or four years, it's become an additional standard that allows a different sort of comparison with our peers. It's kind of a margin comparison because it includes not only the elements of cash costs, but also exploration and capital, depending on the reinvestment in the mine. The, the difference between ca cash costs and all-in sustained costs can be considerable depending upon the capital required to keep a mine operating. Well, the advancement in the East Mine Crown Pillar open pit allowed us to feed additional tons to the mill. We seem to be hitting our stride in the open pit development there, and it's really a key positive change made at CASA because it allows us to fill the mill that has additional unused capacity. Before, we were only sending about 2,300 tons to the mill. Now it's 3,200. This increase in mill ton, tons requires almost no capital, so we'll see a substantial return on investment. Well, the, the strike's been going on about six weeks, and so when it started, we, uh, we got the mine into a position to be able to continue to make investments in it so that it'll be ready to be fully productive when we go back to work. So we're changing the ventilation out. We've, we've changed the direction of the ventilation. We are handling mine water, pumping of mine water in a different way. If we had, we're not doing those things, then when we uh, went back into production, we would have to have a, a, a delay. So we went ahead and, and making those investments. And that's what we're in the middle of doing at the moment. The, uh, the bidding and, and scheduling is, is, if you think about it, it's, uh, it's important in any business because what this is really about is when people work, where they work, and with whom they work. Um, and what this is about is having, giving management the ability to put people in the right position um, to, to do their jobs and to improve the productivity of the mine. And, you know, you can use a, the analogy of a basketball coach and you think about that coach needing to get the right players in the right positions. Um, that's what all we're trying to do is to have the ability to do that. The way the system works now, or has worked under the old contract, is the most senior players would have been able to, are able to determine where people are working. Um, you know, this, if you think about a team, it's just not gonna work for a team and, and, um, and it's not gonna work for the Lucky Friday Mine as we go, go forward. So this is all about changing that system. At this time, the bid system generally only benefits a segment of the workforce uh, as the mill and the maintenance employees are already working under a progression system. The bid system primarily benefits the senior miners who get to pick their crewmates, but the paint, but this prevents many other miners from progressing, from advancing their career. Now, economic issues tend to be more easily negotiated. For example, a, a wage rate uh, can be increased two, three, four or percent or anywhere in between. But issues like assigning work and scheduling are either controlled by the employer or not. So even though the bid system only affects a modest number of employees, it's the key bottleneck in these negotiations. Uh, first, this is simply not true. We've met 27 times over the past year, and once even after they went on strike and an agreement was reached on various items. The union has told our negotiating committee they have room to move on a number of aspects, but they've not talked to us and asked to meet to make a proposal. So we remain open to a meeting with them if they have something to discuss or propose. 
All they need to do is to invite us to a meeting and we'll be there. Uh, the Rock Creek and the Montanora projects that are in Montana, they're 40 miles north of the Lucky Friday. Uh, they have been in permitting for some time. You now have Rock Creek that we're expecting the final supplemental EIS this summer. Uh, Montanora has received its approvals and uh, it's in the legal review process and we're expecting a decision from that in, uh, the, in not too distant future. And uh, we think these projects are going to go forward uh, with the great support that we have from the community and just the great, because there are world-class projects that uh, will provide great benefits to the communities as well as the state and, uh, and the company. Well, 2017 is, is all about what we've been doing in the past, which is growing our reserves and resources. It's also about putting innovations into the mines uh, to improve, improve the productivity of the mines, improve the returns on investments within the mines. Uh, and uh, so we're going to continue down that, that path. And then we're also hoping to get the strike resolved in the, over the remainder of 2017, get people back to work, get people back uh, uh, generating silver and generating the cash flow uh, that, uh, that these mines can produce.